Lennox Lewis and his title defense against David Tua. Eight-year age advantage for Tua. 15-inch reach advantage for Lewis. Lewis at 6'5", Tua at 5'10". There's a seven-inch difference there. Even with the hair on top of his head, Tua doesn't make it further than to within three inches of Lewis. And in weight, Lennox weighed in at 249, David Tua 245. It's the second highest combined weight ever in a heavyweight championship fight, exceeded only by Lewis against Michael Grant earlier this year. Punch stat numbers, Larry. A look at their activity. You can see they're roughly equal. Both of them will throw nearly 50 punches around. That's a good number for big men. Jabs is where this fight might be decided or at least unleashed because Lewis throws many more than Tua and he may throw even more than this tonight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. The Lennox Lewis David Tua fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. First to enter will be David Tua. Both fighters with elaborate, theatrical, Broadway show-style interests tonight, and Tua's in particular will be noisy. Tua has a near-perfect record. His only loss came in a spectacular war with Ike Bayabuchi, in which they broke a CompuBox record for most punches by heavyweights. The decision could have gone either way. He's waited two years for this shot at the heavyweight title. And Lennox Lewis's entrance will be no less elaborate than that of Tua, if perhaps not quite as noisy. Incidentally, that red beaded necklace the Tua wears around his neck is called an Ulafala necklace. Ladies and gentlemen, you watch the television Here comes Lewis. in all four corners of the building.
drums, pump, and circumstance. Can the fight live up to it? Will the doors open? Is there a trap door? Does he fall through the platform into a moat? Probably not. that almost all ringside observers saw as a victory for Lewis. 29 KOs. And the record is not too dissimilar to that of Tua. Just the level of competition in the last two years, which greatly favors Lewis. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Main events. Panics Promotions and your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. Always proud to be your bud. In association with America Presents and Lion Promotions present, courtesy of TVKO Pay-Per-View, HBO World Championship Boxing. 12 rounds for the universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight Championship of the World! Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working for the 135th time in a world title bout Referee Joe Cortez. So now, for the sold out thousands in attendance here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world, courtesy of TVKO and HBO, the moment we've all been waiting for has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white. He weighed in at 245 pounds and brings an outstanding professional record into the ring consisting of 37 victories, including 32 knockouts with only one disputed defeat by decision. From South Auckland, New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen, 
the universally recognized number one ranked heavyweight contender in the world. Here is to a man, David Pua. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white and weighing in at 249 pounds. Since he captured Olympic gold in 1988, his professional record now stands at 37 victories, including 29 by knockout, with only one loss and one draw. From London, England, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the two-time world champion, the universally recognized reigning and defending undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Hedix New. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. When I say break, I want you to break clean. I don't want any rough tactics. Unnecessary fouling, understand, guys? I give me good sportsmen like conduct. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Daniels. Hopefully, we don't get, if this fight goes to a decision, one of those splits in which the popular vote goes to one fi fighter. In your corner. And the electoral Get back in your vote Get back in your goes corner. to the other. Get back in your corner. Nor do we want a uh, George Bush okay. long count. We just want the best two heavyweights in the world Get back in your corner. to show us what they Get got. Back in your Early the referee is trying to establish right now corner. who is the boss. Get and back. it's very important that he establish it. Well, this is the man you call the rest, best referee in the sport, George. So if anybody can do it, he can. Nearly a thousand Tua supporters flew in from New Zealand. Another few hundred from Samoa. Lewis's supporters have come in from England and from Canada. It's a truly international event at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Lennox begins trying to establish his jab, and Tua leaps forward with a left hook, his trademark punch, to begin the action. Tua's got to make certain that when he gets him against the rope, he misses him. Don't throw unless your feet are right there, too. Lewis landed his first right cross. The second one was short. Tua has already shown you his great chin. Oh. Lennox Lewis will better Let realize that the best punch in boxing is still the left jab. Don't stop using the jab. A rare body punch from Lewis. The body punching is not going to help Lewis because he's going to run into a lot of elbows down there. You want to keep the jab, open up the head. Tua misses again, leaping in with the left hook. Lewis, who appeared to want to be the aggressor for a few moments at the beginning of the bout, now steps into a more familiar posture. Watch the way Lennox fights as a big man, never giving away his height, never allowing his chin to go past his front knee, the left knee. One thing good about it, they say keep your hands up at all times. You can't do it if you got a punch down with it. So David Tua's best thing is to stay low so Lennox Lewis hands are low also. But you gotta the drop them to throw your right hand as they are now. That, light, that right hand is down. Keep it there. Lennox looks as though he's not even gonna try to launch the right until he feels like David is straightened up enough for him to get a shot. If Tua stays low, Lewis seems content to parry him and fend him off with the jab. Tua has landed nothing so far in the first two minutes of the fight. But he is the boss because he's bringing the fight to Lewis and Lewis is looking and reaching. You want to decide, Lewis should let him know, I am the boss tonight. You back away from me. Take it to him. Same weight. What about Lewis's tendency to hold his left down around his waist? Well, he has to because all of his opponents are down there. You can't get a good shot if your hands are by your chin if the opponent is too low. Early in the round, Tua came steaming out. Lewis hit him with a couple of good punches, and now Tua is being a little bit more careful as he comes in. And we haven't seen the uppercut yet 
which Lennox believes may be the great equalizer when Tua tries to rush it. Finally, David gets a glove on Lennox as he lands a little bit of a left up around the shoulder. Lewis with another body shot. And it was only in the Franz Volta fight, his last defense, that we began to see him even thinking of throwing punches to the body. You gotta land some body punches when you're fighting a puncher because he only can stay strong if you don't. Take some of the air out of the, out of the balloon. It would be hard to give round one to Tua. He landed one punch by my lights. A virtually perfect round from Lewis's point of view. You gotta Listen to me. I'm gonna put some of this here. Give me a towel. Give me that towel. You understand? Come on, now let's go. Listen, the first round is out of the way. Gotta move that head. Give me that, give me that. Gotta move that head. Move that head. Come on, get closer. Come on. Round one, a CompuBox landslide for Lewis. He threw 73 punches. He landed 20 jabs. Tua got credit for four of 34 from the CompuBox observers. Round two begins with Lewis sticking the jab, sticking the jab, sticking the jab, sticking the jab. Stick, the jab. stick it, stick it, stick it. Tua can't mount an attack as Lewis keeps the left jab in his face. Jab, hold, jab, range finder from Lewis. Tua looking and looking. Lewis just stretching the space and throwing the jab. Tua's got to do some intimidation, run into him, make him think that, hey, you're a coward, so that he can start throwing right and left. The jab, he can beat him all night with it. Now David Tua gets a chance to try to begin working Lennox Lewis's body. He got in one punch to the rib cage a moment ago. Right hand from Lewis, not thrown very hard. Now Lewis is falling into the bad trap. You don't want to drop your hand anywhere near the rope. You're going to drop your hand, make sure you're in the middle of the ring so you have at least four steps backwards. And just as you said that, of course, Tua took advantage and landed a right and a left. Lewis, uh, Tua is doing his bobbing, he's doing his weaving. Every time that Lewis seemed to see something, he takes it away from him. But you gotta do something to make Lewis wanna fight. There you are! That's the punch that's gonna make Lewis decide, I'm getting even. Left hook by Tua, and another left hook by Tua, and a vicious left to the belly. So Tua begins to mount his attack now, midway through round two. Lewis with a right hand and a left. David Tua with a little smile on his face. The time-honored symbol between oh, fighters. Oh, you didn't hurt me. Lewis seemed to try to grab to him and went right on over the top of it. You see, he's doing a good job with his left jab. Don't do anything for a few rounds until you get to know this fellow. He hits you, go right back to your left jab. Don't get intimidated. Don't try to pay him back. Lewis. They were missing. Lewis popped him quickly with the jab. Lewis got to make certain it stays the left hand, left jab. Lennox seems to have regained his concentration, and Tua hits him with the right hand. The Tua supporters in the crowd going wild as Lewis lands a very low blow and gets a proper warning from Joe Cortez. Remember, Lewis is trying to get, above, get away from those elbows, so the, low, the blows are going to go low trying to avoid the elbows. You're looking at the cautious, tactical Lennox Lewis. This is why he does not arouse the passions of boxing fans in the way that great heavyweight champions might hope to do. But if he's able to get that jab working, he can excite me. Jab your way, keep your title with a left jab. If that's the only punch you can land, use it. Well, what he succeeded in doing in this round is messing up to his hair and just landing more punches. And landing a right hand, which Tua answered with a leaping left as the second round came to a close. Then, when you get on the ropes, keep your hands up. That's all. That's all. Keep going to your left. 
Keep going to your left, man. Keep Break going to your left. More. Mix it up so I'm fighting the jab a little bit more before the shoot. If the jab is All right, let's take a look at a replay, Larry, of what was called a low blow by Joe Cortez. It appeared to be just below the belt level. Let's see it. But it was, you know, it wasn't that bad of a low blow. Yeah, that was a low blow, Larry. But it was low. And at the end of the round, a leaping punch that gets Lewis on the nose. That was on the nose. <laughs> right on the nose. The fight is going the way Tua wanted to go. Jab, keep this guy running from you. Keep him running. Make yep. him afraid to throw his right hand. Lewis in the first two rounds, averaging 65 punches per round. And despite the fact that round two was another lopsided CompuBox round for Lewis, Harold Letterman gave it to Tua, no doubt on the basis of his aggression and that left hook that he landed at the end. That's what will excite the Tua followers as David gets inside and lands a left hook uppercut. Lynch Lewis should move and keep moving to his left keeping his jab and making certain that guys have to swing wild to hit him with his left hook. He can do it all night. Move to Tua's right all night and jab. Goes to his left and that's where the trouble starts, right, right now. Good head movement, good shoulder movement by Tua, but he still doesn't, hasn't been able to get really inside on Lewis where he wants to be. Well, here's a chance as Lewis backs into a corner and then steps away. Lewis is doing a good job of keeping his head away from the jab. Let the hand go and the chin stay back. Well, you've always talked, George, about how a big man should fight big. And Lewis, at least in recent years, has been the epitome of that. He's moving now successfully to Tua's uh, right and jabbing. So the way to move for Lennox is to his own left, to Tua's right. And just keep your jab going. When you come back over to that left hand, he's going to interrupt you and it's going to hurt you. There you are. There's Don't go over on that left. side. Stay away from that side. It doesn't take much for Tua's supporters to get overwhelmingly excited. There he's able to land a couple of shots to the body as Lewis moves off the ropes. Once and again, Lewis moves to left. He's got to keep his movement to, to his right. If you want to clown, clown to his right. Hard right, shots to the body, and now Joe up. Cortez tells Tua to keep him up. Lewis is doing too much waiting. You throw your shots, you train, don't be conservative. Let him go. When Lennox Lewis gets into trouble, it's often because he waits and does not stay aggressive with his jab. He threw 65 punches around during the first two rounds, and most of them were jabs. But now he's slowing the pace in round three. Now Lewis is throwing shots. That's what you want to do. It's a lot easier to throw shots and take the power off of them and be accurate than it is to wait around for a good hard shot. And now for the first time, Lewis grabs David Holzen, and the two of crowd moves because they know that their man might be susceptible if Lennox wants to tie him up inside. Outside, look at the Las Vegas Strip. A cloudy day has turned clear tonight. Huge crowd in town for the Comdex Convention. Biggest weekend of the year in Vegas. And a lot of visitors from overseas for this heavyweight championship fight. You understand? You hit him on the arm and you hurt him. You understand? Give me some water. Give me some water. Keep using the up jab. The up jab. The right hand to the body. Double the hook and the straight right hand back to the chest. Just Double the up jab. Really the right hand to the body. Two hooks to the top and the right hand to the chest. Okay? Body shots are the open. Educate. Relax your right hand. He's just about open to get tagged with a good shot. He's got to relax. He's just walking in. Ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. How do you have it through the first three? Okay, Jim. Well, first of all, let me say this much. At the beginning of the fight, you have to start the fight in the corner. Joe Cortez was right by moving it back into the corners. 28, 29, 29, 28, David 
Tua. Two rants to one, David Tua. I just don't see any snapping. Lennox Lewis is left chair. He sticks it out. There's no snapping. He's not doing no damage. So the damage in rounds two and three was done by David Tua. Therefore, he won rounds two and three. Lewis started gave, off aggressive gave, this fight. This I gave round. two of the first three rounds to Lewis. Lewis started out aggressively. That's what you want to do. Make this little guy try to protect himself a little bit. He's making you keep your hand up. Make him keep his hand up and think, I may get hurt. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Now Lewis can step in and keep his hands in position without holding. And then he may, may as well start that now. You don't have to hold. Just step in with your left and then right without holding. And the referee will not rain on your parade. Lewis threw only 43 punches by copy box numbers in the third round. He is so much better, so much more effective when he throws more than 30 cabs and more than 50 or close to 60 punches per round. It's a big difference, though it doesn't sound like much. Crowd booing as Lewis uses the space in this 20-foot Las Vegas ring. The two of people complained through the course of this week. They thought the ring was too big. It measured out to exactly 20 feet, 2 inches, which is right on the nose with Nevada State regulations. Yeah, tour is close. Once you get that close, you got to have your gun already set, ready to shoot. You just can't decide what to do next. Once Lewis' body touches that, the back of those ropes, you must throw shots. George, you said earlier that he's coming to get, to get Lewis's title. That's right. I mean, but he's not coming hard enough. Yeah, but Lewis touches, when he gets into the rope, Tua has to have five shots waiting. Well, but that's what I'm saying. He doesn't seem to be coming after it yet. But he's been known in the past to fight at this pace early in the fight and in the last three or four rounds to come on very strongly. You know, and it's strange because he is not close enough to get the right shots off. And his corners better be well that they should tell him to get closer. Get closer. But they still may feel as though their man, with his constant aggression, the body shots and the fact that he lands more thunderously through the first three rounds than Lennox is winning the fight yeah, and is doing what they want him to do. But in order to throw these, this punch, that punch, he must be close enough. And that's what he's trying to do. And Lewis is doing a good job of not allowing him to get close. Now, when you miss a big hook like that, that's five miles of your road work. Lennox Lewis isn't doing much. This guy's champion of the world, you understand me? Don't let this guy be champion of the world no more. Give me a deep breath, you understand? Come on, give me a deep breath. I want both hands moving now. You understand what you're doing? Ronnie Shields seems to be in sync with you, Larry, thinking that Tua might not be doing enough. Here's a sequence of left hooks where Tua misses, misses, and then... Well, the reason he's not throwing the left hand is frequently enough is because he just can't get there yet. He can't get close enough yet. And also in the first round, Lewis popped up a couple of good right hands. The round four of Lewis's 80 connected punches, 60 were jabs. Tua with an edge of 27 to 20 in power shots. That's what Harold Letterman was talking about. Been giving two of the first three rounds to David. Conversely, conversely, Lewis is, seems reluctant to throw his right hand because he doesn't want to give Tua a shot with his left. So consequently, we have this tactical fight right now. In fact, Lewis considerably more cautious early than you might have expected after the total dominance of his title defense performances against Grant and Volta. But Emmanuel Stewart has been saying all along, this is a different kettle of fish. This is an entirely more dangerous opponent. Oh, right hand by Lewis. I mean, he zeroed in real low because Tua decided to stand straight for a second as he followed him. If you want to follow a punch around, you better be hitting him. You just can't follow a punch around not doing anything. Lewis leaping on top of Tua and holding him as he found himself in the corner. And there's another right hand that he pops David on the top of the head with. 
Now Lewis is finding a certain amount of comfort level that Tua has allowed him to have. Alex sure looks like a comfort level at this He's moment. comfortable now. When he he's even closer hands. with his left jab than he had been on there. He's getting close with it now. He's you don't want him to believe that he can get that close to you. The champion is starting to throw his right hand with much greater frequency here in this round. Tua pops him upstairs with his own right. If you want to follow the puncher, hit him. Even if you miss, throw shots. Don't just follow him around. But Lewis is aiming now. He's zeroed in. George Lewis hasn't used a single uppercut, and it was a hugely effective punch for him, particularly in the second Holyfield fight. Is he waiting to set it up? Yeah, he's waiting. Two is moving his head, going duck and dodging. You don't want to hurt your hand, so he's trying to do it accurately. And sometimes if you just throw it, you'll be surprised the punch is there for you. One of the problems Tua has is that he's throwing one punch at a time. He's not trying to put anything together yet. Some he's blood, blood coming from his Tua. leg. When he goes to his left, he crosses his legs. Well, he's a sitting duck for a right hand. He's, there's blood coming from Tua's nose. Yeah, those jabs have been coming all night. Lewis looking tactically in control now toward the end of round five as David Tua misses, misses, and Lewis pops him on the counter right. Body shots by Tua there. Lewis with a low blow, and then he sticks to it twice with the jab. No warning for body. Cortez. Going to the body. Ah. to the body, did one, two back on top, one that round good. You're fighting a masterpiece in a lot of ways. Just keep working what you're doing. But you seem to be getting more relaxed with you, man. That's what's good about it. And you're really starting to feel just like a good gym workout now. You're winning you're the rounds clearly. The body shot was good here. The store to make it. We've been working on right here, fighting behind the hook. You understand? Use the up jab. Come on now. Don't give this guy to fight. You understand? The way you fought that guy, that guy get in one and we'll fight. Come on now, let's go. You got to fight. You heard Emmanuel Stewart say to Lewis, you are fighting a masterpiece in that round. He Second makes out. Lewis miss, and then he makes him pay. Two of two of misses. Time, time, whole time. In round time. five, by CompuBox numbers, Lennox Lewis landed 10 of 15 power shots, 16 of 38 jabs. That is indeed a numerically brilliant round. Referee Joe Cortez has right. called time here, and now he's ready to bring the fighters hey, back on, out. Get, get in that corner. Get in that corner. Hey, get in that corner. He wants both fighters get to go to corner. neutral corners. Let's listen up. Uh, it's referee, or it's uh, Nevada State Athletic Commissioner Mark Ratner is overseeing the refastening of the buckles in the blue corner, David Tua's corner. So a little extra rest for both fighters here. Okay. One minute, one second. Does this is favor somebody, it. George. Okay. Yeah. No, on. it doesn't favor either guy okay. now because if Tua had get something going. Here. He's Let's lost. Go. If Lewis has something, right. he's lost. Fine. Let's go. Well, if Tua was counting on. Now you go. You got to be reckless. Lead with your hooks. You can't just decide I'm going to tactically take the title away from a good champion like this. Yeah, it's hard to imagine, even though Harold Letterman has two ahead on the scorecards, it's really hard to imagine Tua winning a tactical boxing match. It can't so happen. You feel as though he's got to use his artillery. Lewis is throwing that right hand just like a guy on the pitcher's mound. Sitting there and coming off that mound with it. That's what brings in a lot of power that Tua may not have tasted before because this guy comes from on high with this thing. Now Lewis back to the round one action. Pop, pop, pop with the jab. David Tua is, is just looking for the one shot, it appears. You know, you know, I don't know if you can beat Lennox Lewis that way unless you happen to land it square on the jaw. There was a big feeling as you were starting to get to a moment ago, Larry, in Tua's camp that Lewis lacked stamina and they'd be able to wear him down over a long haul. Now, Lewis was trying to pay him back. This is the fight Tua wants. Make him try to pay you back and hit you back. Lewis had better stick to his strategy and forget about it being being hit that time. It would appear that if Tua is going to make Lewis his stamina a factor in the fight, he's going to have to step up his activity level. Yeah. This was the best left hook that Tua landed in the fight. 
But you're right, Jim. He hasn't made Lewis work hard enough to be able to take advantage of him in the late fight rounds yet. He's got to start doing to know, it right Lewis now. Lewis is shaky and you a lot more shaky than you think. From the one left hook, oh, he had more than one. He allows him to recover. Two it does. You can't rely. You hit him hard. You got to throw two or three wild shots. Well, that goes back to what Larry said a, a little while ago. The two is landing one punch at a time, not in bunches. And Lewis just biding his time, using the tools he had there. Two is trying to get Lewis back over to his left side. He needs to walk on over to Lewis' left and make him go back over there. Just step over there. You know, there, there were concerns that 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 hair might get into Lewis's eyes. It appears to be coming almost down into to his own eyes. As long as there's not any water, uh, and they work on him in the middle. Yeah, of the but it can so, be a distraction. I don't think. Look where the hair is. Uh, he's almost probably spars like that all the time. It does have the beginnings of a sheepdog look. But I tend to side with George. I'm sure too is accustomed to it. He's had that hair for the last couple of years. Once you see him take his glove and move his hair backwards, then you know something is going wrong. Hadn't happened yet. Five. David Tua is giving a disappointing performance so far in pursuit of a heavyweight championship. Start ripping to the body a little bit more now. Boxing bills, you got to do it. Don't start ripping at him a little bit more. What about him? Desperate. He's tired. Mentally, he's sick. He can't get into a flow. You got him all off track. You are not putting pressure on this guy. You're letting this guy outbox you. You're losing the fight, okay? Now, this is the round we got to pick it up. This is your half of the fight. You understand? Look, the second half. Look, it's no fucking tomorrow. You understand? You got to do this shit today. You're not throwing no right hands. You're not throwing combinations. You got to get closer. You got to throw both hands with this guy. Okay? Come on now. Straight, straight right straight hand right. from Lewis. Has no trouble punching downward, George. No, he picks that head up, jabs it, and the head comes up, and he throws the right hand. Well, both two up better keep his head a little lower. Even when he's jabbing, make him hit your forehead right up, up top. Both corners have told their fighters to be more assertive in this round. Let's see what happens. Harold, how do you have it through six? Oh, okay, Jim. Three rounds apiece, 57-57. I thought Lennox won the first, but David Tua, the hardest shots to win the next three. Lennox didn't have a lot of snap. But certainly, in round five and six, Lennox outboxed him. David trying to move in. Lennox popped him with jabs to, you know, to decidedly win five and six. So I got it all even. Uh, you know, David Tua has to get busy in order to win his fight, as he called it. I have it four rounds to two for Lewis. And Ronnie Shields uh, didn't seem to think that David Tua was even in the fight. He told him in no uncertain terms after round six, you're losing the fight. They want more activity from Tua. Yeah, the kind of fight that Tua's fighting, he's losing it. You got to start fighting his fight. Throw shots, get closer. His corner told him once to get closer. Looking at David Tua here, you find it hard to imagine that against Ike Bayabuchi three years ago, or four years ago, he was in the heavyweight fight, which broke the copy box record for most punches thrown in 10 rounds. I guess it's hard to throw a lot of punches against Lennox Lewis. You know, here's the other thing. We've talked about his weight, George. He no, was, he was, weight. He was quicker weight. at 100, at 225. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a factor here. He's, he's young enough, it shouldn't be, but He's just, he doesn't appear to be as quick as he did a couple of years ago. Larry is not the way this guy Lewis is moving to Tua's right hand. Moving to his right hand, his left hook, is, he can't get anything started off of the right side. Want him to move him to his left, and he's jabbing him. That's the problem here. So that's the reason that a guy who threw 75 punches around against Ibeabuchi is throwing 35 punches around against Lewis. Lewis jabs him, touches him with his hand, and when, when Tua looks up, he's too far away. Generally, when a guy hits you, he's close. This time, this guy jabs you, and he's as far away as can be. Now, this isn't pretty. Boxing fans don't love to see it. They want to see the sustained aggression. But Lennox Lewis 
showed you in both Holyfield fights that he's perfectly happy to win tonight and look sensational the next time. Well, why, why should he go and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the shorter, very strong fighter and give the other fighter his best chance? Only so that he doesn't have to read in the newspapers tomorrow that he's dull. You know what? I don't think he cares. He's, I think he doesn't. I think you're right. He, he, he's, he's fighting the kind of fight that got him here. He's he, landed most of the big blows in this fight. Including a right hand right there. Remember, Tua has the puncher's chance. And we said that early on, the puncher, all he has is the punch. But the puncher is landing one punch at a time, and the boxer is out commanding him tactically. Like that, you understand? You got to get on top of this guy. Get on top of this guy and throw punches with this guy. Now come on now. Hey guys, get on top. All right, seconds up. This is not an unfamiliar position for David Tua to be in. In his four biggest fights against David Izon, Moskayev, Ibeabuchi, and Rachman, he was well behind going into the last third of the fight. So you can't count him out. That was the second warning from Cortez to Tua for low blows, and a deducted point in a fight like this could be very big. Tua came out of his corner with a vicious combination to the body, and now falls back into the rhythm of following Lewis around and takes another right hand. Tua's got to get close, and maybe we got to step sometimes. That keeps the left the right foot too far behind him. Just step on up there. Step on up to the plate. He's got to get in there and brawl. He's oh, got to get in there and throw punch after punch. He's, He's got to wrestle with Lennox. He's got to throw him around. He's got to try to change the fight dramatically. He's standing back. Most of his weight on his right foot. We've got to get closer. Step up in there. Put the feet together. He's not throwing more than one punch at a time. Being tentative in part because Lewis is out of his range. I mean, it's not, it's not because... Now he's you know, on the ropes. Jump him, jump him. There you go. Lewis goes in with a right and a left to the body. Cortez watching closely, but I must say, Lennox is taking the body shots without showing in any ill effects whatsoever. Because he's standing right within his rhythm. He's not doing anything that he need not do to cause him to breathe hard. Now Lennox, well, he should have tapped. He should have tapped. On and Tua leaves him alone, and Lennox steps right back away from it. You got to establish the distance, and then once you, you establish it, keep it. Don't let it disappear. Once you get close, you stay close. Could it be, George, that David Tua is just too afraid of Lennox Lewis's right hand to be himself in there? No doubt about it, but he's he's tasted some of that right hand, and he should be afraid. But Tua has a great chin. No, but not coming from up there. Punches. This right hand that Lewis has comes from another direction. It's like dropping a... A pin from a 20 story building. There's a long right hand, lands for Lewis right after the jab. Classic one, two. Lewis hasn't put a three punch combination together, but by and large, he really hasn't had to. Jab and move, jab and move, jab, move to the left, jab, move to the left. Lewis is not breathing hard. Two is not putting the pressure on to make him breathe hard. Shakes, bakes. Doesn't do anything else. Fight bears a fair resemblance to the first Evander Holyfield fight in Madison Square Garden. I'll bet you the copy box numbers aren't all that different either. Lennox Lewis is giving a boxing lesson to David Tua through two thirds of this heavyweight championship fight. And the crowd, at least the Tua supporters, aren't happy about it. If you want to give this, just give this guy his title, this is the champion, you understand? This is the champion. 
you have to take the title. The guy you gonna sit down and say, here, 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 David, take the title. You understand? You're just walking around after. Us. You're walking around. You're, you're not doing nothing. You're door. not winning these rounds. You're so far behind. You need a knockout now. You understand? Free your eyes. You need a knockout. Oh, you gotta go bump. Yeah. 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 All right, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, step it up with your left hand. Look at more. Tip round and fire. The ball's high. You should have stopped him. I don't think he can do him. Mentally, he's right. He's totally right. He's pretty right. wrong. All right, seconds out. Support. Any three-punch combination to do it. Any three-punch combination. The chronically placid exterior of the heavyweight champion from Kitchener, Ontario, in London, England, Lennox Lewis. And you heard what Ronnie Shields thinks about the fight. Yeah, this is the point where Tua has always come on in the past in his tough fights. Can he do it here? Shields couldn't have been any more categorical. He's already telling his fighter after eight rounds that he needs a knockout to win. Now, Tua has him up against him. He's not doing a thing. I just can't understand all of the training and the training camps. Could he have that much fear of Lennox's right no, hand? No, he's just at the left jab. He does not want to be hit with that left jab. Who cares? You can't come out of these fights looking pretty. You're going to have to get some scratches on you. And that's the only way you're going to do it with Lewis. You've got to sacrifice. The minutes are passing, and it doesn't appear Tua has a chance of winning a fight like this. He needs he to has the puncher's chance. If only he would assert himself. Just so get it. Well, lots of guys, no shortage. Oliver McCall, Henry Akinwande have gone into the ring with big talk against Lennox Lewis and then have produced nothing. And, and you have to wonder how many of them have been intimidated by the size and the right hand of the champion. Maybe he doesn't have to do much to win his fights. Whoa! Big combination, and Tua smiles. You know why? Because he was hurt. That's why. But that's that left hook that Lennox Lewis have added to his repertoire. Yep. He it could finally decided to use it. If he throws it with consistency, forget it. How are you going to beat him? Tua's got to be involved. Once those exchanges start, he's got to mix it up. That means Lewis is close enough. Go! Oh, big left hook for Tua. Yeah, but he had his, it went right into Lewis's glove. Lewis has got that right glove planted to his face. He knows that the left hook is, is uh, David's virtually his only chance. It's his only weapon. In fact, I'm thinking of what Lennox said in Free Fight Publicity when he looked at David and said, you know, you've only got one thing that can win you this fight. I've got a whole arsenal. He looks so right right now. Even now, Lewis is pursuing a knockout. Yeah, I think his confidence is rising minute to minute as he realizes that he's just not going to see this storm of aggression that Tua and his people promised. Left jab, still the best punch in boxing, as I said earlier. You use a left jab, you can shut down anybody. This is becoming target practice at this point. Let him go, let him go, clean, let him go, let him go. To his face beginning to swell, just as Holyfield's oh. face swelled in the first fight with Lewis. But if you don't use your hand, I need a towel. it's not going to work. You understand? If you come out and sort of being loose, sort of sit down and start going up here, you'll be real stiff though. Every time you step down, you'll see a whole different change. Larry, let's look at some replays and notably show us again how Lennox blocked David's left hook. Yeah, well, Lewis has him where he wants him now because David wants to come in, is looking to come in, and Lewis knows it. But here, as you saw, as I said earlier, his right hand is just plastered high because he's going to, if, if David too is going to beat him, he's going to try to make him beat him with something else but the left hook. That's great. If you, if, if a team has a great passing attack or a great running attack, you made him be, beat you with the passing and vice versa. You take away the strength 
and challenge them to beat you some other way. Fighting for the title, you can't be afraid to get knocked out. That's and there's the uppercut for the first time, and it wobbles to him. Look, Lewis landed the right, came back with the uppercut. Best combination of the fight. Tua rolled into the ropes. And then Lewis gives Tua a chance by getting aggressive, and Tua finally lands a big That's what Tua really wants. Although you may get hurt, but you want those exchanges so that you can get yours in, too. Yeah, but he paid a heavy price to get his in. You must pay that price. Even if you get scratched up, you got to go to the doctor after the fight. Mix it up. Take a chance. Harold, are you in sync with us yet? What's your score? Uh, absolutely, Jim. 87, 84, six rounds to three. Lennox Lewis, David Tua stopped fighting it basically at the end of, uh, of uh, round four, and it's been all Lennox since then. I wouldn't have it that close. Larry? Well, I, I have it uh, no, 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 no. Uh, seven rounds to two. It, a couple of things we have to bring in here. One is the weight. We don't know how much it's affected him. Another thing is seven rounds against four ordinary or less than ordinary fighters in two years as he prepared to fight the, the heavyweight really? champion in the world. The third thing is we heard that Tua was unable to spar for the last week of his training because of a body shot that hurt him. I don't know if any of that matters, but what I do know is that this is not the David Tua that we have seen. We have to give Lennox Lewis credit for that. Do you know for sure that Tua was hurt in sparring? Well, I didn't see it. I heard it from a pretty good source. Don't take anything from Lennox Lewis tonight. He's winning this boxing match. And some of you guys said he was not, so you're gonna have to come up with stuff. Let the man win the fight. The weight is fine, everything is fine. He's out boxing this kid. And he's about 30, what, Larry? 35, George. Yep. And, and I'll tell you what, George, you won't find me saying he's losing. I think the guy is virtually unbeatable because of his tactical command and his physical superiority. How you go, Tua? Now, just as I say that, he finally catches a left hook from Tua, but one punch at a time. Ooh, that right to the body hurt David Tua. Lennox is hurting him with a lot of punches now. He's getting there. And I think, Larry, of the factors you mentioned, the one that I would isolate is the absence of competition. You can't get ready to fight somebody like this by fighting the kinds of guys to a fall. Yeah, they got into the position of mandatory challenger, and they froze the ball for two years. And this is too big a step up. Tua just doesn't look ready for the fight. You're looking good, baby. You're taking yep. the championship. Yep. Never ground, baby. Never ground. You heard him over there. You caught him right hand over there. You heard him over there. You heard him over there. Just right hand over there. If you get more left hooks, it's time to get this one out of here. Never ground. You're not going up that hook. Anything over this guy. You got to just get in there and you just got to throw punches. There's nothing to lose now, Mike. You have two Don't grabs, jab, no nothing. You're not pocket, giving me anything. Die, you just give me punches now. Just jump on top of this guy, David. This guy, you, you can hurt this guy. You understand? Tour, you got two rounds and it's all over with. You understand? You, go walk you got two fucking rounds. Give it to me. Have a go, brother. You watch that for one punch here. You let on your feet, baby. You got this. A man with one down here. The man is not going to be doing that much. Round 10 by CopyBox numbers. A vintage Lennox Lewis round. 33 out of 56. 59 percent. 19 of 35 jabs. To a landed five of 27 punches. It is becoming a tactical wipeout. Well, it's a desperation time. You never count a puncher like, like David Tua completely out. Well, he's just desperate. You're right. But I, I want to say again, guys, don't be afraid to eat crow. Don't come up with excuses. When Muhammad Ali with me, I had a bunch of them, and a lot of people who said I, he, I was going to beat him, they came up with excuses. But when you lose, you lose. When you win, same thing. You're right, George, but we're not coming up with excuses. We're looking for explanations. There aren't any explanations. When the best man win, give it to him. I give it to Lennox Lewis. He's doing it. David Tua is very, however, is very disappointing in the challenge he's making so far. Hey, listen, for the past few years, to the utter disappointment of a lot of boxing fans and critics, Lennox Lewis is unquestionably the best man. And he's showing it again here. And that's why the crowd is booing. This is not an overwhelmingly popular heavyweight champion, but he might be, for this moment, a virtually unbeatable one. Well, 
If there's any booze, it should be for the challenger. He's not done enough to try to take the title. Lands a good left hook and doesn't do anything after. One punch at a time. Against a Lennox Lewis, who in terms of his expression, the excitement he's shown, etc., is treating this like a sparring session. That's what he's doing. That's what the kind of fight you need to fight with a puncher like that. Play game, take it safely. Tua, all he has to do is just dive in with a right hand and throw a left hook with all his might. That's all he has to do. And things can change. He's afraid to take a chance. He's afraid to take a chance. Even with his trainer urging him and yelling at him, round by round, you've got to do it. Jump in there, fire punches, flurry. This is going to be another round in which Tua will throw less than 30 punches. Lewis has been very good about going to the body also, so Tua will not have the same power in the last round that he ordinarily has. Well, the, 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 his problems in the late rounds is he didn't make Lewis work hard enough in the early rounds, George, as we were saying, so that he, he might wear the older, much bigger guy down. Jab, right, cross, left hook, the beginning of blood under the left eye of Tua. That left eye is beginning to swell shut. Lennox Lewis is just toying with him. Just Pot toying shot. with him. Pot shot. Does whatever he wants to do. Right hand, left jab, right hand, right hand. It's all Lennox Lewis as we reach the end of the 11th round. Three minutes to go for Lewis to hold on to his title again. Disappointing up to now. Can he make it all up in three minutes? Hundreds of fans are streaming for the exit. They've seen enough to know who's going to win the fight, and they've seen enough to know what the 12th round is likely to look like. The 11th was another vintage Lewis round. 33 out of 57, 21 of 45 jobs, two or through only 30 punches. Harold, how do you have it going to the 12th? Okay, Jeff, 107, 102, eight rounds to three, Lennox Lewis. I mean, this one's a walk in the park. You know, Jim, in rounds 9 and 11, Lennox showed us the three-punch combination. He's really in his rhythm. Watch for that three-punch combination, because heavyweights normally can't do that, and Lennox does it beautifully. I'm just waiting for two punches from David Tua. Well, a lot of people saw this as a possible style preview to Dave, I mean, to, excuse me, to Mike Tyson against Lennox Lewis. And I have to assume that Tyson at least would risk more. He would take more chances to try to make it a fight. There's no doubt about it. So this is not a style preview to Tyson Lewis because Mike would just be a heck of a lot more rambunctious. There's no way he'd go in there and throw one punch at a time the way Tua has. You agree, George? You agree, George? Tyson would be more rambunctious? This is Lennox Lewis night. I got you. Let's I'm talking about what comes down the road. Uh, this is a foregone this conclusion. Is the night. This is his night. Hello, this is hello, his hello. night. Well, nowadays, they're all his nights. <laughs> it was his night against Bota. It was his night against Grant. It was his night twice against Holyfield. And it's his night again, clearly, against David Tua. Maybe those people who are filling the exits now are the New Zealanders. Lennox Lewis could be heavyweight champ of the world for the next 10 years if he so chooses, because he only gets better. Well, what you're saying, George, really is the first thing that goes in a fighter is not his legs or his reflexes, it's his zeal to fight. It's his will to train and to fight. And he apparently still has that. 
He's got it all. He's got the package and he's last a long time. I'll tell you what else he has. He has calm. He has confidence. He has a balanced Look, life. He's bouncing his leg. This is the 12th round, isn't it? He's a tremendous he's athlete. Bouncing. There are just no flies on Lennox Lewis, folks. This guy knows how to fight. And he's still aware that David Tua has this power. Still not taking any chances. He's not a fool. He has turned to his face into a swelling, bloody mask. Jab, jab. This is really a great fight. Body shot. Jabbing and moving. And this jabbing and moving. This is a lights out artistic performance by a heavyweight champion who, for the moment, looks impregnable. David Tua. Widely regarded as the second best heavyweight in the world, was reduced to a sparring partner. Big time. Big time. Here's a replay of the last 15 seconds of the round, which frankly, we're man against boy. Jim, I thought David Tua had a serious chance on the assumption that he would be the best he could possibly be for this opportunity. I couldn't have been more wrong. Yep. Yeah, I told people I thought it would be at least an exciting fight, although it was hard for me to imagine Lennox losing it, but it wasn't that either. Science it, again. Science. 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 science again, he says. Yep. Well, that's right, Lennox. You blinded him with science once again. Lewis closed the show. 31 out of 62, 25 of 50 jabs, 2 of 3, 29 punches in another disastrous round. Harold, how'd you have it? Okay, Jim, 117, 111, nine rounds to three, Lennox Lewis. You know, I thought David Tua tried in rounds two, three, and four when he threw punches. Was aggressive, effective, aggressive. This wins rounds, but after the fourth round, he was the aggressor, but not at all effective. Lennox Lewis just outboxed him, you know, and, and what an unclean punching, and it's all there is to it. In, in rounds 9 and 11, he showed us beautiful three-punch combinations. And heavyweights don't do that. The judges see that. And, you know, Lennox, as you called it, was beautiful. Another nearly immaculate performance by a guy that boxing fans, particularly in America, seem to love to distrust. But it's just hard to imagine who's out there at the moment who would have a good chance to beat him. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Jerry Roth scores the bout 117 to 111. Dave Moretti has it 119 to 109. And Chuck Jaffa scores it 118 to 110. All for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world from Great Britain, Lennox Lewis. Final punch stat numbers, and Lennox Lewis almost tripled David Tua in number of landed punches, and threw 261 more punches than Tua. The Samoan-born New Zealander just didn't do enough. Jabs, Lewis landing 162 more jabs than Tua, and throwing more than 200 more. Brilliant performance, one-sided fight. Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Lennox. It looked as though you were simply executing a blueprint in this fight. You describe what, that, what blueprint was. Well, it's just boxingology, simple as that. You know, you gotta come with more than a power left hook to beat Lennox Lewis. That's why I said, if you come into war, you gotta bring your whole arsenal, just not, not just a left hook and a haircut. So that, by keeping your right hand high and watching his left hand, you felt he had no other real options. 
Yeah, I mean, I watched tape on him, and he doesn't throw a right hand, and I wasn't really worried about his right hand, only his left hook. And first round, I felt his left hook, and I realized, boy, what are they talking about? That's not a power left hook. I didn't think there was too much power behind it. But, I mean, he throws, he executes as well. That's the only punch he has. You hit him with some really good stiff punches, especially your right hand. Is his uh, jaw as durable as it was wanted to be? Yeah, I would have to say he's pretty durable. You know, he can take a punch well. Uh, a couple punches I hit him with, he smiled. And I said, okay, uh, we'll receive some more then. Did he say anything to you because he... He didn't look anything like the David Tua who had prepared so long for this opportunity, who uh, was a tiger against many fighters. I mean, he just even didn't make the effort. I said he's never seen a boxer like Lennox Lewis. He's never been in, in against a boxer like Lennox Lewis. That's why I said, you know, it's different when you're in the ring with me. Uh, you can say what you want and what you want to accomplish, but it's a different thing when you uh, try and execute that in the ring. He had his uh, corner talking and saying this and that, David to this, David to that. Oh, it's never been this, it's never been that. But it's a different ball when you're in the ring by yourself. Was your stamina, I mean, it didn't look like your stamina was a problem. Did you have anything wrong? Did you think there was anything wrong with him? Or was it just clear, easy sparring session? Yo, what was wrong with David too was Lennox Lewis. Never seen a boxer like me. You enjoy the boxing, we know that. There was booing in the fight. Do you think it was for you or because he wasn't making the kind of effort that a challenger should make to win the heavyweight championship? Oh, you know, I was doing all the work in the, in the fight. And sometimes I slowed down because I figured, okay, he's, he's doing the 1921st uh, rope-a-dope, just let me uh, throw all my punches out there and try and get me tired. But, you know, if st stamina's not a key with me, I'm always in shape, always prepared for my fights. Give us a clue, uh, Lennox, of what you see in your future. Well, you know, I'll take on all comers. If Tyson wants to come test, I'll put him to rest. What about some of the young uh, fighters like Kirk Johnson, a, a Canadian, uh, Vladimir Klitschko? Give us your assessment. What, what will the year 2001 be for you? Will it be as uh, active as this year, or are you going to take a long rest? I think I'll take a, a long rest. Uh, as far as Kurt Johnson, make him go eat some food with Holyfield. He might as well take the easy route first before it comes to me. Uh, Klitschko, yeah, uh, you know, I'm around. Them guys, if they want to come test, I'm ready anytime. You're 35 years old, yet you seem to maintain your interest in, your zeal for combat. Is that the secret to why you have been successful at this age? Yeah, I'm uh, very competitive. And, uh, you know, you could say I'm like fine wine. I get better when, when I age. You sure did tonight. Thank you very much, nope. Lennox Lewis. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Larry. You know, uh, a couple years ago, Emmanuel Stewart said, George, rather sacrilegiously, I think I can turn Lennox Lewis into the greatest heavyweight of all time. And a lot of people kind of giggled about that. I think Emmanuel still has his eye on history here, doesn't he? Uh, I wouldn't be afraid to say that L Lewis is the best fighter on the scene now, period. Best in fighter any, in any weight class. Any weight class. Shane, Shane Mosley's sitting upstairs looking pretty Shane good. Shane is great also, but Lewis, hey, this guy's been around. He's paid his dues. I don't know why people want to in, will not include him as one of the best around. Possibly the best. Let's see if David Toole will give him some credit. Back to Larry. Thank you again, Jim. David, um... Sorry about what happened. It didn't look like David Tua. Any reason except Lennox Lewis? Uh, no excuses whatsoever tonight. Uh, first of all, Faftaile Tua wa manuini talonga samoe ya na upau la vole me wa wo yene chamu fai foi neyaso. Well, uh, first of all, I thank God that uh, you know I wasn't seriously injured, and uh, you know I, I congratulate uh, uh, Lennox Lewis. He's a great champion, and uh, you know I uh, did the best I could. Uh, things didn't work out for me, and uh, you know that's the way it goes goes uh, sometime. And uh, tonight it was the best man. Why were you unable to sustain an attack? Why weren't you able to follow the pleading of your corner that this fight was getting away from you in something you yourself have said you prepared all your life for? Uh, I, I'm not going to make no excuses. Um, I tried, and, uh, you know, tonight wasn't my night. You know, I tried really hard, and things just, you know, wasn't working for me. But, uh, you know, I kept, I kept trying. You know, I, I, I stuck with it. I'm going to have to ask uh, Dan Goosen, your promoter, what, do you feel that, that 
David was 100% of himself, regardless of how good Lennox Lewis was tonight? I'm concerned, Larry, to even answer that, based upon the fact that we all know that uh, what we saw tonight, and one of the things David's prided himself in is not making any excuses, but obviously we saw that uh, from the second round on, we saw a different David Tua. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I've got concerns about is ever saying, uh, making an excuse, because there's no excuses with us. But uh, in the second round, uh, uh, Ronnie and Kevin told me that uh, David did come back. And, and what happened is, is about two months ago, he did, uh, during sparring session, get hit in the rib, okay, had a little problem there, was off about three or four days, uh, overcame it, okay, came right back in the training was wearing a, a guard, uh, uh, one of the football protectors to, to protect that rib uh, throughout. But uh, the bottom line is, is that uh, he felt uh, he was he was able to go on. He did get hit in the, in the second round with the, with a shot, and that's when he came back, and he couldn't get full extension on his punches. Did that body punch hurt you that badly, David? Yeah, I, I couldn't get up. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not sitting here standing and making excuses. Well, it's I not an excuse. Yeah. If you came and you yeah. fought, I, I, and, I but, it, but, but the public wants to know why they didn't yes. see the yes, David I, tour I, we were expecting. I was, we, uh, we tore a cartilage two months ago. You tore a cartilage in the rib? In the rib cage. And, and two we months with... We got over it through training, and David felt 100% before the fight. We were confident going in. He got hit on in the second round. It restricted all his movement after that. You saw that he was eating the jab. He was having trouble moving his body to the side, slipping punches, and he was having trouble trying to unload his hook. Uh, this is Kevin Barry, uh, um, the, the trainer, manager. We had heard and we remarked that you had hurt a rib. So then you're just saying that if you were 100% coming in, you just have to give Lennox Lewis credit for that damaging shot. Of course, uh, you know, um, you know uh, much respect and all the credits to Lennox Lewis. Um, you know, uh, he, he came out and displays, uh, you know, world champion. Any take none away from Is he that? the best fighter you've ever been in there with? Is he is well, he a more of a, a problem than yes. you even anticipated? No, I've, I've always I've always known that Lennox has got an awkward style, and he came out and, and he did what he had to do, and, uh, you know, that's why he's the, he's the world champion. Thank you very much, David. I'd like to say one last thing, okay? With what David had overcome to get 100% to be here tonight, I know he'll come back. He did, you notice him for 12 rounds here, never, never.